welcome to this M. Lee ARC tutorial. I'm Mike Lee and today we're going to run through the basics of texturing and we're going to do that in a SketchUp to Kirkathea workflow. So I'm going to start off in SketchUp with a model already made. Now this is a model of a chair designed by my buddy Tom Hayjosh. He calls it the Tension Lounge. It's a pretty cool design and he actually fabricated one. So here are some pictures just so you can get a sense of what we're going for. Now it's made out of a laminated plywood which is one material but when you're rendering something like this the material should actually be understood as two textures. One for the smooth face of the board and one for the laminated end grain. Because if we're just going to write it off and say oh yeah it's wood so we'll give it a wood texture. Well that gives us a very different kind of chair and the material quality is basically lost. That's why it's really important to think about how many textures actually go into any given real world material. So let's undo. Alright. So you can get your paint bucket tool by hitting B. And I've already preloaded some textures. So we'll select the texture for the face of the board, right here. And we'll go in. And, there we go. and then we'll. The end. All right, and then we'll select the texture we want for our uh, laminated end grain, and then paint in those textures. All right. And I actually made this texture by compositing a bunch of different wood images that I downloaded from CG Textures, and you can find a link for that site below. All right, so now that our model is texture mapped, we need to make sure that we have cameras. Um, and you can do that by going to View, Animation, and Add Scene. I've already pre-added three scenes. You can see. All right, so now comes the point where we actually export the file. Now for this tutorial, I'm assuming you already have the Kirkathea program and plugins installed. So if we go up to plugins, we go to Kirkathea exporter and export model, we get some export options. And you just need to make sure that you have a yes next to geometry and default UVs and a no for everything else. So just geometry, default UVs, and make sure everything else says no. Now click OK. Now select the file destination and just name it whatever. Save. It might take a moment, but when it's done exporting, a pop up window will ask you if you'd like to open the exported model in Kirkathea. Just say no. It tends not to open up correctly, so, so just say no. Alright, now we'll open up Kirkathea. Okay, and then we'll open our file. Now the display might look kind of intimidating, but it actually is really simple. Um, if you want to get rid of this wireframe crap, then we can go to View, uh, Adjust, and then Solid Rendering, and then there you go. That looks a lot more manageable, doesn't it? Now for some scene settings. We'll go up to Settings, and go to Scene. And I just used some rule of thumb settings here that I think I got from Alex Hogreaves' tutorial videos. I'll put a link for that below. So just check soft shadows and turn your radius value up to 300. Okay, so soft shadows and a radius value of 300. Hit OK. Now we need to check and see if our textures look good. All the textures are listed on the left hand side of the display and are named exactly as they are in the SketchUp model. Um, so if we go over here, we see PW face, that's the one I used for the smooth face of the plywood. Right click, edit material, and you can see a preview here on the left side, top left side, of what the material will look like. Now I want to give our material a little bit of specular highlight, so I'm going to right click specular over here, add color. And by default, it's on a black value, so I'll just go over here to the RGB color selector 
and I'll just lighten that value a little bit. So I'll give it a value of maybe 60. So I'm going to do 60 across the board. Hit accept. And then I'm going to check the specular sampling. Okay, you can see just a little bit, some of the checkeredness, checkeredness? Yeah, some of the checkeredness comes up on the, on the model here. If I uncheck specular sampling, you see it, it goes away. If I check specular sampling, it comes back. Now these are kind of like, uh, the specular value is kind of like a uh, reflective value, but it just calculates like light bounces and not necessarily uh, a perfect reflection. So some of the light is bouncing off the checker floor and onto our material, which is, you know, it's, it's how light behaves in real life. So a little bit of specular value is always good. So I don't think that's enough. I'm going to go and up that value a little bit more, let's say 80. Again, I'll do 80 across the board. Hit accept. All right. So you can see it come out a little bit more. I'll apply changes and close the editor. Now I'll go to our other material, this, this end grain material right here, PW LAM end grain. Edit material, and we can preview what that looks like. I'm just spinning around with this dial here. All right, and we'll give that the same specular value. Because basically what's most shiny on the material is actually the lacquer, the layer of lacquer you put on it. So it's going to have the same value. So that's going to be 80, just as we did on the last one, because that lacquer was used throughout. And specular sampling. Okay, apply changes, close editing. Now I'm just going to give a material to our, our foreground slash background object. I put it in the scene, just because I like to I like kind of set the scene in a traditional uh, CG artist manner. You can check out how to do that in my tutorial entitled uh, something like Creating an Animation SketchUp to Cook a Video, something like that. But there'll be a link for that below too. So I want to give this kind of a reflective material, so I'll select it. And you can do that by left-clicking it or finding it up here in the, uh, in the models list. And we'll right-click that, Edit Material. And I just want to give that a little bit of specular value too, just so it'll... It'll pop a little out of the window. So maybe 120. And again, we'll do that across the board. Accept. Check specular sampling. Apply changes. Close editor. All right, so now we're just about ready to render. You can go up here to the Start Render button. It's the green one with the running man. Just hit that. So the camera settings you select here for rendering are going to be specific to you and your machine and the quality of rendering that, that you want. Um, so you can you can play with these. Uh, I'll just show you what I use. So first, I'll select the camera. Okay. Seems one. And then I can uh, put in my own values for the resolution. I'll just do standard 1080p, so that's uh, 1920 by 1080. Under the settings, I'll go down to, let's say, 7. Threads, I'll just go to 4. Like I said, you can, you can tweak these to your own machine and your own style. And that's all we really need. Just hit OK. All right, so as it's rendering, you can see the quick view down here on the bottom right. And if you want a larger view, you can come up here to Image. And that'll pull up your rendered image. And open up that window a little bit. I'm just going to let it go. Um, I'm going to turn off the recording and then get back to you when my rendering's done. Okay, so our render has finished, 
and all we have to do is go up here to save and then you can save your image file and that's the basics of texturing in a SketchUp to Kirkithia workflow. I want to thank my good friend Tom Hayjosh for letting me use his Tension Lounge chair design for this tutorial. If you find the design interesting and want to check out more of his work, you can find a link for that below. And as always, continue checking out the Toot blog on mleark.com for weekly uploads. Till next time, tschüss.